Hey guys, in this lesson, we're going to learn how to set up a custom UI in ZBrush. This is my personal custom UI, and I'm going to be reverting it back to the standard UI in ZBrush. To do that, go to Preferences, Config, and Restore Standard UI. ZBrush should now be at its original standard settings. We're now going to create a custom UI. So go to Preferences, Config, and click Enable Customize. The Enable Customize button should now turn orange. When that happens, that means that you are now able to customize your own UI in ZBrush. As you can see, a custom menu list has opened up between the top shelf and the standard menu list. Also on the bottom shelf, you'll be able to drag down buttons to customize your UI. You can go in any of the tools and drag out a button, or you can even go in the standard menu list and drag out buttons from there. Now we're going to drag a button out. We're going to go to the Extract tool. So click Extract. Now to drag Extract out, you do Control Alt Left Click. We're going to drag it down to the bottom shelf. Make sure not to drop it into the interface or it will disappear. So we're going to drag some other buttons. We're going to drag down sliders, some smaller buttons that help out extract. We'll pull out some clay polish. So control alt left click, drag it down and drop it. Do the same with Z Remesh, get the sliders for it. And we'll go down to the formers and we're going to drag out inflate. So as you can see, I'm sliding inflate back and forth. It's inflating the star. Also, if you look at both sides on the tool side, it's also inflating at the same time. So it's acting as an instance, basically. If you look at the zero mesh tool, it's also moving the zero mesh tool on the right side. So let's move some buttons on the top shelf. This is really helpful for me because my ZBrush settings do not fit my monitor. As you can see on the right side, some of it is off on the side. So it's the same process. You do Control Alt Left Click, and you can drag it back in to the UI where you can see it. So you can put it in a custom shelf right here, or you can bring it at the bottom. When dragging your buttons, you have to make sure you drop it in the right area or it'll disappear. So if you can see, there's no white box there. So you dropped it and it's gone. It's not in your lower toolbar and it's not in your upper toolbar. Now this is a good way to remove buttons from your custom UI on the top shelf or the bottom shelf. So let's drag out a button inside the interface and just drop it. And if you do this, you'll see that it disappears. So UI edits aren't just for top shelf or bottom shelf. You can also edit the left shelf and the right shelf. Let's edit the right shelf. We're going to control alt, left click and drag out into the interface some buttons, get rid of the ones we don't need, move some that we need, put them up there and just move some things around show that you can edit some places you can even move those buttons to the top shelf or the bottom shelf if you want to if you want to change the sizes of the buttons you can go to I believe it's interface and button size so the lowest you can do is 38 unfortunately uh, you can go higher, you can go to 66, and uh, when you do that, it automatically say that it will adjust uh, the sizes of the buttons the next time you open ZBrush. So let's close ZBrush and reopen it back up to see how it looks like. Now, if you want the settings for uh, the, the custom UI, to be saved out then you need to 
save out a CFG file. To do that, you want to go back to Preference, Configurations, and now Enable Custom UI. You want to click on it to say Stop Enable, and you want to save the UI. So I'm going to save it as Tutorial UI and say save. Okay. So now I'm going to close this down and I'm going to reopen it back up. Okay, so I opened back up my ZBrush. Now, if, as you can see, my buttons are way bigger than they used to be. My custom UI is back on. The old UI I created is not there anymore. So the buttons oversized, my screen is smaller. Uh, I don't want those buttons to be as big. So I'm gonna change it back to the way it was before. Preference, interface, and bring the button size back down to 38. And it's going to readjust it the next time you restart ZBrush. So I'm going to restart ZBrush again and bring it back to the way it was before because this size configuration is not usable for me. Okay, so ZBrush is opened back up again. I re-lowered the, the button sizes down to 38. And uh, it's back to the way it was with my original custom UI configurations. Now, how do I reload the custom UI that we created together? To do that, you can go to Load UI and Tutorial UI, which I saved out. Double click on it and the custom UI you created is back. Now, you don't see your buttons here. The reason you don't see your buttons here is because you haven't put something on the screen yet. So technically the tools don't exist yet that we dragged out. So to have those tools show back up, you just click on any of these meshes and they'll pop right back up. Drag it on there, edit, and there you go. You can use it. Now, if you want to permanently save the U custom UI so that every time you load up uh, ZBrush, it's going to show up just like I have, you can go to Preference, Configuration, Store Configuration. Now, Store Configuration will permanently save the custom UI uh, for every time you load. So I can do store configuration. It'll say master configuration file has been saved successfully. It will be restored every time you start ZBrush. Okay. Now that's not what I want. So I'm going to load my custom UI. Load. This is the one that I usually use here. And uh, I'm going to say preference configuration, store configuration. Okay. So now this is what's going to load for me every single time I start. And you can see I got all the buttons I use the most. I got uh, creasing tools, extract tools, Z remesh, insert mesh, clay polish, duplicate, delete hidden. I got from masking. Uh, basically everything that I would find in the tools and I will have to go back and forth and try to click. And now I can just click here real fast and not be distracted by all these things here. So you're probably thinking, how did I make the buttons blue? That's uh, pretty simple. Uh, you go back again to preferences and instead of going to configurations this time, we're going to go to eye colors. So we're just going to focus on the buttons. If you want to experiment with uh, other colors, then you can, but uh, there's so many of them that if I go over them, you'll probably forget. It's better for you to just click and experiment and find out yourself. To change the these uh, blue buttons to green, 
we're gonna find the green you want here. I'm gonna say, oh, this color is about right. So let's go and replace it. Do it to eye colors. You're gonna want to change SW1, SW2, SW1. As you can see, just change the gradient of the color at the top. SW2 will change the rest of the color. So now everything is slightly green. Probably want it feel greener than that. There we go. Let's do that again. Boop, boop. There we go. That's nice and green. So now, as you can see, the slider buttons are still blue. So you go back in there, and the slider buttons are K2. Click on that. And there you go. Everything inside of uh, all your drop downs and tools should be green now. Now you can experiment with other stuff. You know, you can make your palette, you can make your menus, you can make your text, uh, you can do sl more of the sliders. Icons, you can make everything green. Let's make everything green here to show you the extent of uh, how far you can go. Let's go all green. Oof, can't even read anything now. It's okay. I know where to find the, the reload tool. So now everything's green. Oh, now everything's green. I think. Oh, okay. So that's the extent of uh, how much you can change. Let's see if I can find the button now to reload. Okay. I want to reload the color. I, I saved out a color before I did this, which you should also do. So default eye color template, which is the original ZBrush color template. Click it. It's back to how it was now. Uh and save it, load and save. Make sure you save before you start editing. Make a default uh, template. Um, load configurations. As you can see, reloading a ZBrush uh, custom UI will also save the colors up. Of course, uh, if you just wanna change the colors, then you just gotta do it, save I, UI colors, and it won't affect anything else. That's about it for the tutorial. Uh, if you liked it and you wanna see more, make sure to subscribe, uh, ring that bell, and like the video. Uh, if you wanna see any other specific tutorials in ZBrush, let me know, and I can create one and focus on it. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching.